<laughs> Saturday night's a little bit easier, I'll give you that. No, um, see, to be honest, right, we won the game, there's a lot of positivity, positive momentum, positive energy, but in general, I've got to hand it to the players, I've always remained positive throughout this difficult spell, so... Yep, changing room is a wee bit more buoyant than it normally is. Saturday night was a little bit easier. But in general, the, the everyday environment remained pretty stable, if I'm honest, because the boys have been quite buoyant throughout this difficult period anyway. I, I don't think we've been a million miles away for getting results, right? I don't, I really don't. But the boys dug themselves out of hole on Saturday and I'm, hopefully that gives them a wee bit of self-belief. Um, but again, we've got to try and turn that Cup, cup. Per- I'm going to say results. It's probably more results and performance. To be fair, the cup results and the league results. Um, so I have got to start. Games are running out. It's the 13 games left. Games are running out, and we're. I'm pragmatic enough to understand that. I think the boys realise that. Um, there's a lot of perspective in the building, so we need. To, I've been saying this, saying this since match day 31. We need to start picking up um, points in the league. Hopefully the party fits all the result gives the boys the boys about his self belief. I don't really look too far ahead of the Simon game if I'm honest. Kinda of, I know you guys playing pretty generic answer, but that's kinda of how we work. I don't really look at this batch of games and say, like we need to try and do this or we need to try and do that. If you start getting yourselves kinda of mid to long term targets and you feel Feel to get them, it's perceived as it is a it's a huge negative within the building. So I just kind of focus on the next game. The next game is St Martin and can we try and pick three points up? I think there's a few candidates for manager of the season. Um, I think there's been some really, really standout managers this season and I think Rollo's one of them. So that probably puts that question into context in terms of how good a season St Myrna are having. What do I think? Yeah, yeah obviously you watched them. Kind of irrelevant what I think. They're up there, they're scoring goals and they're up there in the, the league table. So I think Robbo's got them extremely well drilled. They pose an attacking threat. You only need to look at the last two games and the goals have scored. So um, going to Easter Road and winning 3 0. So I think they're really, really, really disciplined within their structure. Every single player knows their job and you get nothing for nothing. They're very, very difficult to break down and they scored goals. So um, I think the league table speaks for itself. It's St Mirren's performances speak for themselves. So I think they're a, a very, very well drilled Premier League football team. Yeah, but I've. I've it's an area of the park, I'll be honest, we've not been good enough in this year. Now we could flip that and say defensive third's not been great either, but I think we've missed a lot of opportunities. And if we even just look back since the turn, January onwards, the opportunities we've had in games to win games of football, maybe even going back to December, and we've not took those chances. And that's been really, for me, that's been one of the biggest obstacles we've faced as a group, was not taking my chances, we're creating the chances but we're not taking the moments in the game and for me it's these moments that change games of football. Um, I think just using Kilmarnock away, we had some very, very good opportunities in the game and we lose 1-0. Hearts at home, Hibs at home, Ross County at home, Dundee at home, St Johnson at home, Kilmarnock at home. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of missed opportunities within the games that we're speaking about. I've never really been overly concerned, albeit a Albeit we've not been scoring any goals, I think where I would be concerned is we're not creating any chances. So I've never been overly concerned in terms of um, not being able to score the goals. I knew it would come good at some point, obviously, I'd much rather that um, eight weeks ago than, than now. But we've always created chances within most games um, and it's just been clinical not enough in the execution and the final thirds let us down. But on Saturday, Saturday, I think the boys, the boys stuck their chances away. There was three forced changes on Saturday. Stephen Bradley started the warm up, warm up, and pulled out of the warm up. Um, Sean Donlan, forgive me if it's Sean or Pitts, so it was either or. Sean went off with a hamstring niggle, then Pitts went off with his Achilles. So we lost a player at the warm up. We lost two players. During the first half, that led to two stoppages. I only had one stoppage less, albeit I had three subs. Three of my subs, eh, three subs left, but three of the subs were young players. It's probably got very, very little 
between them probably 20 minutes of Premier League football so three of the subs that were on the bench had lost a sub in Stephen Bradley um, and made two four stoppages so we were in at half time only really had one stoppage and potentially two subs left that I could theoretically put on the part so I think I'll be honest I think the Wednesday night schedule a Wednesday to a Saturday I think it's no great for the players welfare we came off the back of a difficult game at Kilmarnock um, boys not getting to their bed to 1, 2 o'clock on Thursday morning and then you're trying to prepare for a Scottish Cup on a Saturday afternoon if you look at the timescales what's that 6 hours something along the lines and then we lost two players in the game and one player at a warm up and I think it had a the Wednesday night game had, a, I know it was other teams done something similar. If I was at home and we never had that travelling, it's a little bit different. But I don't see why that fixture on Saturday couldn't have been the Sunday to give the boys that preparation. I just think when you, you look at a Sunday, Tuesday, a Wednesday, Saturday, I think we've got to be a wee bit, a wee bit cuter in how we do rescheduling because I think it's a really, really quick turnaround. So in terms of the outs, it wasn't great before the game. And it's definitely no great sitting here just now because we lost three players within the game. There's a, that board for training yesterday, we had 10 training and 12, 12 on the injury side. And that shows you how bad it was. And that was three coming in. Potentially, there may be, potentially, there may be one of that group that I just spoke about coming back for Saturday. But he needs to get back, he needs to get through, through today's training session first. So, the numbers are really, really depleted. David Carson comes back into that mix because David missed the Scottish Cup through playing in the previous round. Um, so it was really difficult. We had a reserve game yesterday and it was, we probably used 15 under 18 players because we had no real first team players to put into that in case anybody got injured. So, um, aye, we're in a difficult moment in terms of numbers. And it's about getting these boys back on the park as quick as possible. But also while you're doing that, trying to look after the boys that are available week on week, because that's a big one. Michael, Mick, Mick's been out, was it the Rafe game? It was. Mick went out with the Rafe game with a calf injury. It was a contact, really, really bad bruising. He's really struggled to shake that off. So that was the last previous round with Rafe Rovers. So Mick's missed that. Mick had a good start to the season and it's been a wee bit stop start if I'm honest in terms of injuries but he's not the only one he's not the only one that's probably been very very similar with another four or five players no so Penrice again conflicted messages we got told he's probably looking like he got an MRI four weeks ago and we got told he doesn't need surgery the injury's got a wee bit worse so we spoke to the radiologist who suggested that he needs an injury so we um a minor operation so we spoke to the surgeon who done his previous two operations on was it Monday we spoke to him on Monday and he suggested that he doesn't think he needs an operation but he needs a, a cortison so James is going down to the surgeon that done his previous two operations on Thursday to get a cortison and that's probably rules him out for a week to ten days Anyway, but hopefully that going all going well, that gets him back a week to ten days quicker than what the surgery would have. So James is going in the first time, we'll just need to see how that re reacts. Um, Jack Hamilton's not a million miles away, but again, it's, we need to monitor Jack, be careful with Jack. We've got two goalies, so it's not an immediate rush to get Jack back, so it's about getting Jack back in a safe and proper manner without having to rush him back. With some of the outfield players, I feel at this point you're kind of trying to rush them back for the next game. There's so much at stake and it's no helping the group, if I'm honest, because they're maybe breaking down a wee bit sooner than they would have, they would have done previously if you gave them an extra week. And fair play to the players. Pittman's been playing through an injury and he made the call. He, he said, I want to play against Partick Fissel. I want to help the team, Gaffer. He's went off with Achilles, stroke, calf. Um, but we Pats had been playing through that injury because he knows how important every game is to the club over the past probably six weeks. So, and everybody else, all the boys are generally, in a, they're all kind of rushing themselves back to try and be available to help the group. But it's no ideal.